Shots in. Shoot. Score. Hello and welcome to Season 5 of Gauls All Access. I'm your host, Aaron Cooney, here to bring you the most up-to-date information and an inside look at your San Diego Gauls. After a disappointing season last year, the organization looked to make some changes, the first being the hiring of head coach Matt McElvain for the San Diego Gauls. The organization held an introductory press conference in May to welcome coach McElvain to the Gauls fan base and the community of San Diego. I can't wait to begin all the work necessary to lead these young men in our organization and reestablish the winning culture that is the San Diego Goals. Matt's probably going to see about 10 players, 21 and under next year, that he's going to have to oversee, mold, make them understand what it takes to become a pro, but make them understand what it takes to become a champion. I believe the best way to develop individuals is in a winning environment. And this is the culture we will bring to San Diego. The annual NHL draft was held in Nashville, Tennessee, June 28th through the 29th, where the Anaheim Ducks held the second overall pick that the Ducks used to select the top European skater in the draft, Leo Carlson. With our first selection, we are proud to select from Orbro SHL, Leo Carlson. In total, the Anaheim Ducks drafted nine players, including forwards Carlson, Nico Majadovic, Colson Petrie, Kerry Terrance, and Igor Sidorov. There was no time off for the prospects after the draft, as the following week the Anaheim Ducks opened up their prospect development camp on July 3rd. The five-day development camp featured Ducks prospects participating in on-ice skating and skills and off-ice strength and conditioning and leadership development sessions conducted by the organization's coaches and player development staff giving the prospect group their first taste of the NHL environment. There's so much enthusiasm from, from those players. Uh, you know, the, when we sit back and reflect on practice right away, the, the messaging in the coaches' room was, boy, did those guys compete today. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a really exciting time for them to be able to wear the Ducks jersey. You know, our, our goal is that we, we want to be able to see them play and see their skill sets. They all have something unique to offer. That's why they were drafted here uh, and brought into this camp. And, you know, for us, we want to give them enough structure in the game that they can uh, let their skill sets shine but um, you know we also don't want to overwhelm them with any information. It's the final reminder that hockey season is around the corner, NHL training camp season. The Anaheim Ducks opened their annual camp at Great Park Ice in Five Point Arena on September 21st with a roster of 63 players competing for roster spots with the club. It's a good chance to make a good first impression. Um, you only got one first impression, so you want to make the most of it. And um, it's a it's a new group. Like I said, it's a pretty much fresh start all around. Uh, I think it's great for this organization. Like I said, uh, a lot of young guys coming in uh, with some still some familiar vets that are going to lead the way. Uh, I'm excited to get going. Expecting to be you know pushed for a playoff spot this year, and that's where we want to be. Um, and almost equally as important as like I said, building our culture. I think with all these young guys, you know, have all these young exciting players coming in here and. Um, we want to make sure that you know we're, we're coming to work every day in camp. Um, we're establishing you know the culture that we want to have moving forward, and, and that's what Greg's been preaching to us too. Nice to kind of see some structure to the practices with uh, with the coach, new coach, and, and what he's bringing. But it's also nice to see some of these young guys that you know potentially are going to make this team. So it's been great. It's really an exciting time. Uh, I, I think for not only those guys, but I think for our, our young players. Um, they're bringing in some of the guys that we brought in are uh, a wealth of experience in winning, um, got championships. They're being inserted into part of our leadership group as well. And so it's going to be every day they're, they're going to see that and they're going to lead. While many young players were returned to their junior clubs for another season of growth, the San Diego Gulls welcomed a group of their own to the rinks Poway Ice to battle it out for a spot on the Ducks AHL roster. We've got a, we've got a young group in this room. And whether it's looking at an older player and deciding you want to make a change, maybe looking at some feedback that you've gotten recently, uh, hey, I'm not, not ready for the Ducks yet, 
uh, you know, go spend some time in San Diego, there's a switch that happens mentally when the chase really becomes on and you start to go pursue something every day. Listen, the gap is real. And the only way to get there is to start aligning everything you do with where you wanna go. But it doesn't happen without that player making that first choice that says, I wanna make a change. And whether you've been in the East Coast League or you've been in the OHL or you've been playing in the American League or you know, you've been in the NHL a bit, um, we're here for a reason. We're here to get better and we're here to grow. And it doesn't have a chance until that first choice happens. That's like, I'm gonna close that gap. With preseason schedules complete, it's on to the regular season for both the NHL and AHL as the Ducks kick off their regular season Saturday, October 14th against the Vegas Golden Knights, while the Gulls begin their regular season tonight against the Ontario Reign right here on Fox 5 San Diego. Coming up, we sit down with the man poised to lead the San Diego Gulls back to the Calder Cup playoffs, head coach Matt McIlvain, right here on Gulls All Access, presented by California Coast Credit Union. The San Diego Gulls are back for another exciting season of hard-hitting Gulls hockey. Join us for our home opener on Friday, October 20th at 7 p.m. as we welcome the Ontario Reign to Pechanga Arena. Be one of the first 8,000 fans to receive three giveaways, including a hockey stick cooler bag, and be sure to enjoy our Gulls Blue Line Blondells for $5 until the end of the second period. It's all presented by Cal Coast Credit Union. Secure your tickets now by visiting sandiegogulls.com slash tickets. We are extremely excited to to announce today that uh, the hiring of Matt McElvain. Maybe a once in a lifetime opportunity uh, to, to go and um, contribute to an NHL franchise like this uh, and be able to be a part of a great community like San Diego. San Diego is a very important uh, part of our organization and so we're really excited to have Matt here today. Lock this, lock this, lock this, lock this. Matt, go, 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 Eddie, go. Retack, retack. Nice play! Nice play! We're going to see a team that plays suffocating team defense. You know, it's, it's really, really hard to create chances against us. And, and we've got a lot of young prospects with uh, great offensive upside. They're going to have to learn about playing defense in pro hockey. And we're going to help them with those lessons. Yeah, I don't want this puck getting out of here. Okay, let's go. I don't want that puck getting out of there. I want that puck to get swarmed. Yeah, swarm! Swarm! We'll create a learning environment with very clear standards and very clear expectations. And then we will work to uphold those on a daily basis. We're pleased to be joined by the fifth head coach of the San Diego Gauls, Matt McElvey. Matt, welcome to San Diego. Great to be here. I'm mean, thrilled to have you here and families get acclimated and they're gonna enjoy a great city, America's finest city. Let's dive into your hockey career. Um, you know, for you, why hockey? Where did your passion for the game come from? We moved to Portland, Oregon, and uh, my family became season ticket holders of the Portland Winterhawks. I fell in love with the sport pretty quickly. There was a player on the team that actually taught me some about skating, and he came out and gave me some lessons. I thought that was the coolest thing in the whole world, but really from that point, I uh, started to love the sport. And you began playing and, and getting into career, and, and you uh, spend a year with the Chicago, Chicago Steel. You're drafted into the NHL. Um, were you at that draft? Do you, do, you remember, do you remember from that draft with the Ottawa Senators calling your name? I was not at the draft. Uh, we knew that it, it wasn't going to be a, a high pick, and so it was probably just going to be a phone call. Mm -hmm. I got drafted in a round that doesn't even exist anymore. So that's where um, you know I find a little bit of humor in that. But I, I remember a family hug. That's what I remember. My mom, my dad, and I, um, for some reason, we were at the top of our stairs, and we were all kind of hugging each other. It was just one great moment for family. What was those playing days like for you? Just dreaming, dreaming about making it and uh, trying to trying to hope nothing gets in my way. Um, my my professional playing career was injury riddled. I tore both my ACLs over the course of about a year and a half and you know, I had some concussions. And unfortunately, my playing career was cut short and uh, you know, now I'm sitting here today probably because of that. Playing career unfortunately comes to an end with, with the injuries, but how did that first coaching opportunity come about for you? After my playing career stopped, um, I didn't really want to deal with the pain of, you know, having, I don't know, been dreaming since you're, you know, 
skating and watching the Portland Winterhawks, you know, back in the day of, of making it to the NHL. And then all of a sudden I got a phone call from a mutual friend that, that knew of a, a job opening. And so there's a position available for uh, the worst team in the worst league in all of professional sports. And they said, Hey, would you like to come? And I said, this sounds a lot better than what I'm doing right now. So uh, I found out real quick that I loved coaching. And quickly from there, you, you're, you're, you're moving to Europe, back to Europe again and, and, and coaching there. What was the draw for you to go back there and, and really develop your, your coaching career? Don Jackson. So there's a, my, my mentor coach is a guy named Don Jackson. And Don, by the time that he made the phone call to invite me to come to Salzburg with him, he'd won five uh, championships in, in the German uh, Ice Hockey League. So in, in our world in, in Europe, Don Jackson is a, is a legend. And the most common question that I get asked from coaches, players, media, uh, spent six years with him. And the most common question I get asked is what makes him so great? And things I think about are one, uh, he's got a system that's, that's full of, of detail. Two, uh, he's always thinking about the players. There's a message that's coming. How are they going to receive this? And how can we shape it better for them? And then lastly, is no matter how much success he has, he's one of the most humble men you'd ever meet in your life. And just the kind of quality that he brings to each day um, for me is stuff that I try to emulate as a coach. We're different people, we have different styles, but um, he shaped me so well. How do you move to Europe? This is something just I'm curious about. Like yeah. this, you pack up everything and then you're gonna go put down roots somewhere else that you have to fly across the country or across the, the world to. Yeah. What's that experience like? So there's sort of a, an order of business that needed to take care of it. I had a girlfriend at the time that, uh, needed to be proposed to. So I got on a knee, I think it was the day before I left and asked my wife uh, to marry me. So then, I don't know, my, my brother-in-law tells me this is the best plan is that you, uh, you get engaged and then you leave the country for a year. So my wife was able to plan the wedding. You know, what, as a hockey player, you're so used to putting your stuff in, uh, in a suitcase and then you move. And this is just moving in a, in a different place in the world. And you realize the language is different, but pretty soon you realize that they're still people and they have maybe a little different pieces of the culture. But I found that I loved them, our time in Europe. With that group, I mean, winning three consecutive DEL championships, you know, what was that run like? with that whole group and, and to do something that's, you know, three in a row doesn't happen often. The first one was, uh, I hadn't won anything in my life since like the might state championship. So it was like, it really meant a lot. You know, there's, there's tears, there's emotions, there's, you know, all this like jubilation that you feel the next two almost felt like relief. Uh, from the perspective of you're supposed to get it done and you know, you can, and you're on this mission the whole season. Having done it before, um, you felt like that was supposed to be the end result. You feel like once you win it, that it, it's yours. It's not anyone else's and you don't want to share it. And in the end, you know, there's the same emotions, the same great feelings, the same stories, uh, just a different journey each time. Coming up, we have part two of our sit down interview with head coach Matt McElvain right here on Gauls All Access presented by California Coast Credit Union. Good job. Let's go. Let's go back. Let's go. The Anaheim Ducks organization mourns the loss of Nick Cordelis. An Irvine native, Nick became the first player from Orange County to play for the Ducks. My dream was always to play in the NHL, and once I got the taste of it, it just makes me want to be back there that much more. A fan favorite, Cordelis played three seasons for the San Diego Gulls. It was pretty cool, pretty cool atmosphere here. I think every seat was taken out there, and uh, a moment I'll never forget. Guarantee tickets to every Gulls game this season when you join Gulls Elite. Gulls Elite is an a la carte season ticket membership program where no two accounts are the same. Starting at only $15 per game, you'll receive parking passes, a dedicated sales rep, and access to exclusive events and experiences. Learn more by visiting sandiegogulls.com slash Gulls Elite. And now we go on the ice with Gulls head coach Matt McElvain for Ducks Development Camp. Give me a yell, Nady. Give me a yell. Yep, love that. No holes, no goals. Talk, talk, talk. Nice and loud, call for your passes, guys. Talk, talk, talk. Talk, talk, okay, talk, please. Talk, 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 call for your passes. Talk, talk, talk. Oh, Leo, are you coming with us? This is the, this is the best circle right here. Good. 
small detail. I know if your coach does this, because he will, he's going to say, let's make sure we get outside that circle. Yeah. And you learn it right now. Yeah. We're forwards and we're like, we're, we're used to like getting ready to go. We're not thinking about all this skating. What happens is we get here, but you're going to arrive as F1 low sometimes. Sometimes you're going to be first on the puck and you're going to go have to handle Milan Lucic, you know? And you got to go handle that horse in the corner. If you end up rolled and you're, you're, you're down or you're broken or, you know, you're hooped. Hey, Smitty, how, how'd you feel, bud? That's a bagger, bud. It's a bagger. Yeah. yeah, especially after your legs are burning a bit. Yeah. Way to be patient. Way to be patient. Good, Kinger. Good, Kinger. Everybody's played D? Oh, okay. Oh, Leo's turn. Oh, let's see it. It should look like Lindstrom, I think. All you got to do, Leo, you just let him run into you. Like, the, it, you don't have to kill him, okay? You're not, you're not, uh, you don't have to blow guys up. It might happen sometimes in the game. But all you gotta do is be in his way and then you're gonna be all set. If you just back up and block every time, you have no chance. But you go challenge that guy, now you bump him when you got a stick in your hand, that play's dead, dude. That was excellent, way better. Hey, that was sick. And now part two of our sit down with head coach, Matt McIlvain. Next you're making the transition to becoming a head coach. Was it difficult to leave that you, the situation you had and what goes into that transition from associate to now it's your, it's your group, it's your team. It was hard to leave, you know, like uh, to some point, you know, you're comfortable when you get comfortable somewhere, you're uh, in an environment where you're having success. At the same time, I, I really felt ready. I felt like it was time to take that next step and learn uh, from, from one chair over. And uh, it's a lot different, you know, when you're making suggestions and you're making decisions, it's a lot different. And, you know, for me, I, I felt really ready Things that were new for me were having a staff uh, and being responsible for a staff. And then you're making decisions, you know, as a, as a coach in Europe that affect people's lives. You know, as far as like, do you stay, do you go? That was that was all new um, and a part of that learning process. Quickly find success in Salzburg. How did you find what Matt McElbane hockey is going to be? I think you, you take a little bit from everywhere and you understand that you're not anybody else but yourself. And there's so many lessons that I was able to pull uh, from our time in Munich um, and then, you know, put them in right away. Um, and for, for me, creating an environment that is conducive to learning, uh, creating an environment where there's extremely high standards, creating an environment where um, everybody feels significant to the task and what we're trying to accomplish together. That's really what we try to do on a daily basis. Again, you find yourself winning. <laughs> now this time as a head coach. Back-to-back uh, -back championships with Salzburgs, 22 and 23. What was that experience like? Did it did it feel any different than winning as an as assistant coach when now you have this is your team, this is what you molded, and it, it completed the ultimate goal? It felt different. Yeah, it felt different. And you know, when when you're with Don Jackson, who'd already won whatever it was, you know, you're with Don, and you know that Don could win. And then you know, you go out on on your own adventure and build a staff, build a team, um, you know, get the pieces together. Yeah, it felt different. The The two championships also felt very different. Like um, our first year, being able to go on a run and go 12-0 and in the playoffs was, it was something really, really special. Uh, last year, going to game seven in the finals felt felt way different. And uh, still to this day, I kind of can't believe the way that that game seven ended. But there's there's just so much, you know, joy that's that's tied into that those memories. What was this welcome like for the organization to, to bring you into San Diego, what have you felt and the family has felt as you started your roots here? I kind of go to that meet, that first media day, like the introductory press conference, you know, drive kind of over the hill and you start to see the bay. It's like, okay, this is something, this is something different. And uh, I was hosted at, at an unreal location where we're kind of overlooking the water and the fan energy, even in, in an event like that, um, the support, um, you know, from the ducks, from the community, from the fans, you could feel that immediately. And for me, I'm just, I'm happy to be a part of it. What's the biggest lesson that you learned in Europe that you're bringing to your coaching and your staff, your organization here in, in San Diego? High standards are okay, you know, and, and upholding them is, uh, is part of the deal. You know, it's okay to have high standards, you know, to be able to go chase something down, it, it, it brings motivation to every day. Once you set a goal, where do you put your focus? And it's into the process of each and every day. And it sounds a little bit cliche. It sounds a little mundane, but there's so much power in it. And trying to get each individual connected to their day and trying to get each individual connected together because now there's, there's a lot of power that can come uh, in pulling guys in the right direction. 
you finally step onto the ice with a Anaheim Ducks uh, track suit, the gear, um, you know, you're out there with a prospects, you're at a practice facility for an NHL team. What's that first experience like for you at the, at the development camp? Development camp was so fun. It was so fun to meet the guys. The character of the prospects in this organization is so exciting because that gives you some sort of a window into their opportunity for growth. And they're already in a great place and they're high-end character. So now you've got real opportunity for growth. Looking at this group moving forward, it was a tough year last year uh, for the Gulls organization. Coming to this year, I mean, again, high, expectations high. It seems like this San Diego is starved for a winner. The city in general, they would love to see this. What can you tell Gulls fans to expect from their group when they're watching them on the ice? Um, this should be a really entertaining brand of hockey to watch. Um, we should be pressuring the puck nonstop. You're going to see guys skating. Uh, there will be some physicality. Uh, when we get it, we're going to try not to give it back and try to possess it as much as we can down in the offensive zone. I mean, our players love to, to play down there. The fans start erupting, you know, when the puck is down there. And I, I think our fans are going to appreciate, you know, the work ethic uh, that, that our, our players are going to put forth. And you got a little taste of what Pachangari is going to be like, the, the game Friday with the, the Ducks and Kings. What did you take from that? And are you looking forward to even more of that when you get the, the fans on your side and it's a, just a San Diego Gulls production? Fans showed up. They, they turned out for that game. And um, all I've heard is you know, how exciting Changa Arena is on the Friday night, uh, Saturday night, and how loud it can be. Um, and we can't wait to, to use that advantage that our fans can give us. Um, you know, they'll, they'll show up. They always have. And they'll be excited. And we'll use their energy for sure. Matt, thanks for your time. Appreciate it, and good luck this season. Thank you. That'll do it for this show. Be sure to join us next time when we sit down with Gulls forward and 2022 NHL first-round pick Nathan Gauthier. Enjoy the Gulls season opener tonight at 7 p.m. on Fox 5 San Diego. I'm Aaron Cooney. Thanks for joining us. You've been watching Gulls All Access, presented by California Coast Credit Union.